Uh, actually, you know what the hell with it. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about this dynamite show. <laughs> Screw it. Let's talk about this dynamite show. You win. Here. You know what this show was? It was dynamite. Yeah, there was. Including that opener with John Moxley and Hangman Adam Page. Excellent, excellent match. Probably the best of the three they've had so far. And John Moxley pinned him. And what they did was they did a flash pin. And the story afterwards was, I don't want to win like that. <laughs> I don't want to win with a flash pin. I want to just, I want this to be decisive. I remember well, back in the day when a pin fall was decisive. Not anymore. Yeah, but look at the character. Look at John Moxley, the character. He was dying there and had to get a reversal and a trap and got a quick win. And, I mean, as a man that they've been knocking each other out, there have been threats of knocking each other out. That man told the other man's wife he's going to knock out her man. Look, I understand exactly because this is Moxley. If somebody else was doing it, I would, you know, it would be something different. Well, the match was awesome. And the post-match clearly spells out, we got to do it one more time. And we need a decisive winner. Which, in fact, does sound like a, a last man standing, a Texas death match. Hopefully not the kind they did at WrestleMania 10. Where they did falls count anywhere, but after the fall, you had 60 seconds to get back into the ring or it didn't count. Stupid. That was dumb. Yeah, just do last man standing slash Texas death, whatever you want to call it, because a true Texas death match, that has all the falls in it and all that sort of stuff. And at this point, that would confuse people to try to pull that back out of the past. Just make it where one guy has got to be leaving another man laying, unless you want to do, this would be balls, but unless you wanted to do I quit. And, and have a situation where you build to that, where it's it's more than just leaving the other man down. It's having the other person say, while they're still conscious, you're the better man. We had the acclaimed versus the outrunners. And let me tell you, when me and Filthy Tom Lawler win the Black Label Pro Tag Team Championships, Brian. I want, Mike, I want our first defense to be against Truth, Magnum, and Turbo Floyd. <laughs> That's their names. The Truth, Magnum, and Turbo Floyd. Not Slow Floyd. Turbo Floyd. They were destroyed. And then afterwards, they did an angle where the ass boys came out. They want the Acclaims tag titles. That sounds familiar now, doesn't it? Wanting tag titles. And, uh, and, and after a comment about drowning his sorrows in the bottom of a pill bottle, Daddy Ass said they could have a tag team title match next Wednesday. And the claim were like, what? We didn't agree to that. So, uh, you know, speaking of people not agreeing to no, know, world tag uh, No, no. Takeshita. And Brian Cage had a great match. And you know who won? Takeshita. He got his big win over Brian Cage. And is it was very uh it was very interesting because he beat Brian Cage. And then later they did an angle where Takeshita is gonna face MJF next week in a non title match. And like all I read last night was people thinking, oh now Takeshita's gonna beat MJF. Because he got a win over Brian Cage. Brothers, he ain't beating MJF. He brawled with MJF. He's got to win the title Anything is possible. I mean, don't get me wrong. But he No, it's beat, not possible. If that's not possible, Brian. Not beating don't MJF. Don't stop it. He's yes, not beating MJF. It could actually happen, but that doesn't mean that it should be possible in the world of your booking of your pro wrestling show that that should, it should be what happens here. Well, what? I mean, what people think is like Danielson's going to cost MGF the match or whatever. You know, you know why I Unless don't think they're moving the company to Tokyo because Cyber Agent bought it from Tony Khan. That's the only way you put Takeshita over at this. Well, point. here's the Sorry. thing, everybody. Here's here's what some people don't seem to understand this about MJF. Are you ready for this? I think. He's a heel. Yeah. You, you, you love Takeshita. So he's going to beat him for heat. 
That's the point, right? Am I wrong? Yes. No. Yes. You're be. supposed to be mad when the match is over. You're supposed anyway. to be mad that Takeshita did a job for MJF. That's what I think is going on here. So, yeah, he's going to lose next week. It's all right. Yes. It's all right. I mean, he's, he's, he's beating Daniel Bryan's protege mm -hmm. to lead to a match with Daniel Bryan. Yes. Why would the protege beat MJF? And let's be honest here, folks. They've done a great job building up Takeshita. But unless you're a hardcore wrestling fan, these this is the first time you're seeing Takeshita. To you, he doesn't have all that history. It's a young guy who, obviously, he means something. He's like Great Muda was in 89. Like, that comparison as far as, like, positioning him where, yes, he's a younger guy, but they don't keep talking about that. He's just a guy who's here now. So continue on with that. Now, if he loses in his next feud to, say, Matt Menard, you've got a problem. But I don't think that's going to happen if he takes an L to MJF. And we have got Renee interviewing the Jericho Appreciation Society. So next week, if Ricky Starks wants another match with Jericho, he must go through Angelo Parker, Matt Menard, either Garcia or Guevara. And he won't know the final, uh, the final opponent till the last second. So that's the uh, that is what he must do to get another shot at Jericho. We had a segment with the elite Don Callis Nakazawa, and they accept the challenge of Top Flight and AR Fox. And Kenny says, if they want to shoot their shot, they better not miss. And Nick, whoosh, nothing but net, <laughs> and no socks on Don. My God, that look. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Uh, the only thing more played out was him talking about NFTs was that hat he was wearing. Oh, my. Bowl of soup come with that one? I'll talk about it more tonight, but, uh, you know, hate to break kayfabe as always, but it was not one take. Sorry. What, for, for that hat? For that uh, <laughs> basket. <laughs> See, now, now you just spoiled kayfabe. You, know, you tie it back around to Mr. Perfect. Come on. He hole in one every time. Nothing but net every time. You but the actual story the is sort of funny, but I'll tell him the Brian Benny show tonight. <laughs> Brian Danielson, Timothy Thatcher. So, uh, great. They just uh, they had a fight. And, man, this Timothy Thatcher, like, he's such a uh, character, dude. Like, his... his Everything about him is just what a what a gimmick, but he's awesome. And Danielson beat him with the knee, and the cell job he did for that running knee was so great. And of course, Danielson's deal is that his shoulder gets worse by the week, but he won't give up. And uh, and next week, no, it is not. Uh, it's not old chicken chest. Unfortunately, it's very sad to hear that. But mm. what can you do? We had uh, the MGF Takeshita brawl, and then uh, Renee announced that Tony Khan has signed them to a title eliminator next week. And MGF is furious, and they cut to the announcers, and Taz is furious, and he goes, he's the champion. No one cleared it with him. And Tony Schiavone goes, I don't know if you're aware of this, Taz, but the real guy in charge here is Tony Khan, and he says this match is happening, so deal with it. And Taz goes, you're such a kiss-ass. And there's a pause. Tony Schiavone goes, yes, I am. <laughs> I laughed. The announcers were awesome last night, the entire show. Well, MJF is uh, going to pay off. I can't even do it with my thing anymore. Roosh. There we go. You know what else I can't do with Invisalign? Whistle. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> kind of. Man, hmm. my whistling game is off. Jade Cargill in Red Velvet. Jade Cargill beat her. She's got 50 no now. All that, all that, all that to get to 50, and then she just won. Although they did do a visual pinfall. And man, I gotta say, because I'm just a sucker for this kind of thing. Jade wins. She goes in the front row. She grabs her baby daughter out of the front row, and her daughter's crying. She's so proud of her mom. She's hugging her and kissing her. And I was like. All right, fine. You can do 50 more. God. Stop. It was so cute. And then uh, Britt Baker got attacked. Ruby Soho shows up to see if she's okay. They don't trust her as far as they can throw her. Then the main event, Samoa Joe, Darby Allen, 
And man, I wanted Darby to win and then lose to Hobbs. But uh, in fact, we're just right back where we were. Samoa Joe beat him in a crazy violent battle, including a uh, muscle buster off the middle rope onto exposed boards. I hope they give Darby some time off after that. And after Joe... Reti- Why? You want to see him every week, I thought. Well, I wanted to see him do the open challenge, which he was doing. I didn't say he'd be going forever. You want to see him just out there thrashing his body around even more late than he well, did last night. Well, you know, night. Mike, he's going to do it anyway. So he may as well defend that title every week. Enabler. But now Joe is the champion. And who should make his big return but Wardlow. And everybody went crazy for Wardlow, and Joe bailed out of there, and Wardlow threw a security guy over the top rope onto some other blokes, made his big return, and uh, overall, I thought this was a great show. I don't know about the rest of you, nor do I really care. I thought it was a great show. Exactly. What do you care? But look, it works still with Darby and with Hobbs because you don't need to have the title on Darby for Hobbs to go through and look... You don't get point. it. I want Hobbs to be the champion. But here's the thing. He he will be a champion at some point anyway. The biggest thing you can do right now if you want Hobbs to be a heel is to make sure you put him against him, put him against Jungle Boy maybe a little later on. Maybe that could be the feud later on down the line for the TNT title, both of them wanting gold. But yeah, I think you have to be careful on how you position him because people are really going to cheer him killing people. So if you want him to really be built up as a heel – Put him in there with guys like Darby where it's unmistakable that people will probably be on Darby's side. Here is some actual commentary from Bash and Burger. I love barbecue. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> During this match, uh, I believe uh, Bastion was uh, choking on his chicken wings. Bastion said, uh, Vince, you haven't lived up to your contract. I uh, require four or five pizzas delivered in a wheelbarrow. It was at this point that Bastion Burger demanded hot dogs. Were they delivered in a wheelbarrow, too? Yeah. That's a big hot dog. We were told Razor and Zanetti have called. It's a big wiener. <laughs> yes, Brian. Big, juicy wiener. Yes, in between two buns. <laughs> oh, you broke Vinny. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.